Let's begin with the top story of the day. Now, after the high voltage arrest drama of BJP leader Tejinder Pal Singh Baga involving the Punjab, Haryana and the Delhi police, Baga is now back in the national capital and will be produced before Dwarka's court magistrate shortly. Now, before that, he is likely to be taken up for a medical checkup. Let me tell you that BJP leader Tijinder Baga was arrested from his residence by the Punjab police today for making inflammatory statements against Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal after the latter's views on the Vivek Agnihotri film, The Kashmir Files. While the Punjab police was taking Baga to Mohali, they were stopped by the Haryana cops after the Delhi police registered a kidnapping case based on a complaint by Bagga's father. So after a high voltage drama in Kurukshetra, the Haryana cops handed over Bagga to Delhi police. Earlier, the High Court turned down Punjab police's plea against Tijinder Bagga's transit to Delhi and the matter has now been adjourned for tomorrow. My colleague Bhavtosh now joins me for more inputs on this story. Bhavtosh, uh, you know, the Tijinder Bagga is uh, now going to be appearing in Dwarka before the magistrate. What more can you tell us? We have all seen the kind of drama that uh, really ensued through the day today, which is to do with uh, his, uh, his arrest. You know, so many statements have also been, uh, you know, uh, uh, sort, sort of been made. Uh, the major ones being from the family members. The, those are very, very startling claims of also assault that, uh, you know, uh, Bhagat's father really made. So what all is going to happen today as uh, Tijinder Bhagga is all set to be produced before the magistrate right now? Uh, Griha, the story is uh, far from over. Uh, it's expected that Tejinder Bagga will be examined by the Delhi police uh, either at uh, his residence or uh, here at uh, Janakpuri police station. Remember, there is a abduction case that has been filed on a complaint that was given by Tejinder Bagga's father early uh, this morning and uh, police have said that uh, investigation will continue irrespective of uh, Tejinder Bagga coming to his residence in Delhi. Remember, uh, tomorrow the matter will be taken up by Punjab Haryana High Court at around 4 p.m. in the evening and uh, Punjab police have in fact made it very clear that uh, their team was stopped from going uh, to Mohali and in fact they were virtually stopped by Haryana police. Haryana police on its part have said that uh, they were only uh, honoring the uh, search warrant that was given by the Delhi police and they have said that Delhi police had said that Tejinder Bagga was kidnapped uh, by uh, some unidentified person. Uh, Delhi police on its part have said that uh, they filed a case of abduction on a complaint that was given by Tejinder Bagga's father. Uh, they also said that they did not know that it was Punjab police and uh, they have said that uh, once uh, Bagga's father uh, lodged a complaint, they had no option but to go ahead and file a case of uh, kidnapping. Having said that, what we had seen today was a very bitter uh, war of words and in fact uh, claims, counterclaims, allegations and uh, counter allegations by three uh, prominent state police, the Delhi police which comes under uh, Union Home Ministry, the Haryana police which comes under uh, BJP and uh, the Punjab police which has recently uh, uh, come under the AAP government. Uh, this uh, does not uh, augur well for uh, for the state policing and the interstate coordination because uh, the, the state police have uh, are handling some very sensitive cases. Yesterday itself, uh, the Punjab police had said that uh, on their tip of uh, the Haryana police had uh, in fact arrested four terrorists. And if we just go by the claims that uh, have been leveled uh, today by various state police, mm -hmm. uh, there are very startling allegations. The Punjab police had in fact said that their senior officer, a DSP rank officer, was detained here at Chanakpuri police station by the Delhi police for not one or two hours, but at least for mm -hmm. six hours. When he was leaving, we tried speaking to him and he has said that he had not done anything wrong. Right, uh, Bhavtosh, in fact, the fact that you are at the Janakpuri police station at the moment, there was so much uh, really that happened over there. And very rightly, you mentioned about uh, uh, the detention of one of the officers, the DGP rank uh, police officer from the Punjab police also. There's been so much of back and forth that has happened between the Delhi police and the Punjab police. The Punjab police really claiming that they had already apprised the Delhi police before actually taking Bagga, uh, you know, on the way to Mahali. So where does the case really uh, stand at the moment when it comes to these statements that have uh, come from these various state police. But Griha, uh, the Punjab police case uh, stands. They have said that uh, they went ahead and filed a case against Tejinder Bagga for his frequent uh, social media posts, which they claim are very inflammatory in nature, and which they have said that uh, 
in fact uh, leads to communal disharmony. Now that case has been filed under Section 153A, which is a non-bailable offence, uh, which leads to, uh, which in fact uh, covers religious uh, uh, disharmony and uh, various sections of IPC, including that of uh, 5052, uh, 5051, and criminal intimidation. Now they had also claimed that despite issuing five summons to him uh, right from April till uh, late uh, uh, last week of uh, April. Uh, Tijinder Bagga did not join investigation and they had no option but to go to his uh, residence and pick him up. It's the last bit of picking him up which is controversial. Why did not uh, Punjab police go ahead and inform the Delhi police? Now, here Punjab police said that the moment they went to his residence and took him out, uh, a senior officer of Punjab police went to Jan uh, Janakpuri police station and uh, the Delhi police, in fact, detained him. Now, that officer was a DSP and, in fact, we had seen him being uh, uh, detained, virtually being detained for six hours. Now, the Delhi police on its part had said that the Punjab police officer uh, had, in fact, came here and said that uh, Tejinder Bagga uh, had been taken into custody and he's on his way to Mohali and uh, he will be produced at around 1 p.m. Now, that, there is way, uh, there lies uh, the allegation, uh, counter-allegation, claims and counter-claims because here everyone is uh, blaming the other side. Haryana police, uh, in fact, said that uh, they only sto uh, stopped uh, Punjab police because there is an active search warrant that was issued by Dwarka court. The Delhi police on its part has said that Tejinder Bagga father came and lodged a missing complaint. Uh, Delhi police had also sh uh, shown a lot of allegations in filing this uh, uh, kidnapping case when uh, when someone just arrived at the police station and lodged this complaint and Punjab police also should have gone to the court and asked for a transit remand even if it was just for a few hours. And Bhavtosh, the fact that he is all set to be produced before the magistrate, uh, you know, in the Dwarka court, any update? When is that set to happen? Well, it's expected that uh, once his uh, medical examination is done, which is also a legal procedure, he will be taken to the residence of, uh, of duty uh, metropolit uh, metropolitan magistrate who stays in, uh, the, in uh, Gurugram. Uh, once uh, the search warrant is cancelled, uh, because she is the one who had issued this uh, search warrant, uh, then uh, he will proceed to his residence and one can see... One can expect uh, the local BJP leaders uh, giving a rousing welcome to Tejinder Bagga and uh, it's expected that early in the morning or maybe a little later, uh, the Delhi police will be recording his statement either at his residence or here at Janakpuri police station because police has said that they have to give their side of the story before Punjab Haryana High Court. So the case is far from over. Uh, Bagga will record his statement and obviously will say that he was abducted by Punjab police and Punjab police will also say that Bagga has a habit of uh, making inflammatory speeches and inflammatory comments, uh, comments on social media and they had no option but to file this case and because he was not joining hmm. the investigation they had to pick, uh, pick him up. It is the manner in which he was picked up uh, that has lead, uh, led to a lot of controversy. Absolutely. Bhavtosh, thank you so much for extensively breaking it down for our viewers uh, because uh, like Bhavtosh was mentioning, uh, this is a case uh, that in fact, uh, uh, you know, attracted a lot of eyeballs considering it had turned out to be highly dramatic uh, bec uh, because of how things really ensued when it comes to these dramatic arrests of Tejinder Pal Singh Bhaga. And like Bhavtosh, of course, my colleague was mentioning over there, it is essentially a case of uh, center versus the Delhi government where BJP is is protesting amply against the arrest. So politics over Bagga's arrest continues while BJP has called his arrest illegal and also cited vindictive politics. Aam Aadmi Party, on the other hand, has pulled out Bagga's old records and has called the action as much needed. Although Congress leader Navjot Singh Sidhu, in fact, slammed the Aam Aadmi Party government for settling personal scores with this arrest. इसी तेजिंदर बगदाजी पर पंजाब पुलिस ने एक केस फाइल किया क्यों क्योंकि उन्होंने पंजाब का माहौल बिगाड़ने की कोशिश करी उन्होंने पंजाब में सांप्रदायिक हिंसा भड़काने की कोशिश करी और इस वजह से पंजाब की पुलिस ने उन पर एक केस दर्ज किया जो कानून की प्रक्रिया है उस कानून की प्रक्रिया के तहत तेजिंदर बग्गा जी को पांच बार समन भेजा गया कि वो इन्वेस्टिगेशन में शामिल हो लेकिन तेजिंदर बग्गा जी इन्वेस्टिगेशन में शामिल नहीं हुए 
क्योंकि वो इन्वेस्टिगेशन में शामिल नहीं हुए पंजाब पुलिस ने लीगल प्रोसेस फॉलो करते हुए तेजिंदर बग्गा जी के नाम पर एक अरेस्ट वारंट इशू किया और वो तेजिंदर बग्गा जी को अरेस्ट करने के लिए दिल्ली आए पंजाब पुलिस का दिल्ली के मुख्यमंत्री ने तमाशा बनाकर रख दिया है इतिहास के सत्तर पचहत्तर सालों में हमने ऐसा कभी नहीं किसी ने देखा होगा कि एक राज्य की पुलिस और दूसरे और तीसरे राज्य की पुलिस पंजाब दिल्ली हरियाणा आमने सामने कर दिया आपने आपने पंजाब पुलिस के ऊपर दिल्ली पुलिस ने अपहरण का मामला दर्ज कर लिया है पंजाब पुलिस को हरियाणा पुलिस ने बॉर्डर पर रोक कर रखा हुआ है पंजाब पुलिस के बड़े अधिकारी इसमें दिल्ली के थानों में बैठे हैं कब जब पंजाब की पुलिस पंजाब के अंदर कानून व्यवस्था को देखने के लिए लोगों को सुरक्षा देने के लिए थी पंजाब का पटियाला कुछ दिन पहले जल रहा था पंजाब के अंदर गैंगस्टर वॉर दोबारा हो रहा है पंजाब में नशा माफिया दोबारा सर उठा रहा है पंजाब के अंदर एक पत्रकार पर कल परसों जानलेवा हमला हुआ है लेकिन वो पंजाब पुलिस को दिल्ली के मुख्यमंत्री जो बदलाव की राजनीति करने आए थे वो बदले की राजनीति कर रहे हैं वही राजनीति जो भाजपा आज तक और अभी तक करती आई है क्या किया भाजपा ने जिग्नेश मेवानी जो गुजरात के हमारे कांग्रेस के विधायक हैं उन्हें असम में जाकर गिरफ्तार करती हैं उन्हें जेल भेजते हैं कोर्ट में उन्हें बेल मिलती है भारत फिरे को एफ आई ठोक देते हैं और जिग्नेश मेवानी वापिस जेल जाते हैं कोर्ट फटकार लगाती है वहां की सरकार को ये केस एफ हमारे पास दिल्ली की इन्फॉर्मेशन है हमारे पास और कोई इन्फॉर्मेशन नहीं है कि पंजाब की पुलिस है पंजाब में पकड़ा क्या किया उस गाड़ी को रोक करके और चूंकि दिल्ली की इन्फॉर्मेशन है तो हमारा काम ये था कि दिल्ली पुलिस को हम हैंड ओवर करेंगे चाहे वो यहाँ के ले जाए और चाहे यहाँ से हम दिल्ली पहुँचाएंगे क्योंकि तो हमारी ड्यूटी बनती है इस बीच में उन्होंने अपनी आइडेंटी बताई कि हम पंजाब पुलिस के लोग हैं हम इनको लेकर के जा रहे हैं तो हमारा काम यही था कि हमें चूंकि इन्फॉर्मेशन दिल्ली पुलिस की है दिल्ली पुलिस को हैंड किया है आप या तो दिल्ली पुलिस से ले लें या वहां से दोबारा जाकर के अरेस्ट करें लेकिन दिल्ली की पुलिस को इन्फॉर्म करने के लिए बहुत जरूरी था हमारा काम हमने किया इसके बाद आगे के घटनाक्रम में उन्होंने पंजाब पुलिस ने कहा कि हम कोर्ट में जाएंगे ये करेंगे वो करेंगे उनका काम है अल्टीमेटली हरियाणा पुलिस ने दिल्ली पुलिस को सौंप दिया दिल्ली पुलिस लेकर दिल्ली चली गई है आगे का काम पंजाब पुलिस जाने दिल्ली पुलिस जाने हरियाणा पुलिस का उसमें कोई रोल नहीं है All right, let's now shift focus to the state of Tamil Nadu and the chief minister in the state MK Stalin seems to have taken the criticism following the two alleged custodial deaths on his chin because he has now directed the CBCID to book the cops for murder in the Chennai custodial death Bignesh who allegedly died in police custody on April 19th and over 13 injuries were uh, in fact reported according to the autopsy report and also the uh, Tiruvanna Malai case where Thangamani's postmortem report has come out today that report has revealed that there were injuries on the victim's arms and ribs and that some of those injuries occurred about 6 hours prior to Thangamani's death and in the latest uh, in this particular case the national sc st commission has now recommended the suspension and arrest of five police officials and also sought compensation and protection of the family members and witnesses in this particular case my colleague shilpa now joins me live on the broadcast shilpa an important statement there by the chief minister of tamil nadu and also the sc st commission taking cognizance in this particular matter Uh, well, that's right. In fact, uh, after a lot of criticism and after mounting pressure today, Tamil Nadu Chief Minister M K Stalin spoke in the assembly, and he, of course, said that uh, you know he's directed the CBCID to alter the case as far as the Vignesh custodial death is concerned, because earlier the case was registered as suspicious death, and now, uh, based on the findings of the post-mortem report, the Chief Minister has directed the CBCID to make uh, to alter the case. and book the cops on the charges of murder so that of course is extremely significant because we had of course put out that post mortem report of bignesh which revealed that he had of course sustained over 13 injuries uh, there were several contusions all over his body there was abrasions on his gluteal region there was a fractured leg so all of that of course suggested that bignesh was indeed a victim of police brutality and several such evidences have come out and that of course put a lot of pressure on the dmk government and that is the reason why the chief minister said that and the cops will be booked on charges of murder and today the cbcid officials interrogated the police uh, officials uh, of g5 secretariat colony police station uh, for over close to 10 hours and even now the interrogation is continuing and what we are given to understand is that the arrest of the erring cops is likely to happen 
and that is something that uh, you know we are of course waiting to know uh, whether the arrest will be made today because the interrogation has been going on for over 10 hours now uh, but apart from that the national commission for scsc uh, they've also taken cognizance of this entire matter just yesterday uh, members from the panel had come down to chennai to inquire into this incident and today uh, recommendations have been given to the dgp saying that action should be taken against five police officials they should be suspended and they should be arrested and relevant sections of the SCSC Act should also be uh, uh, invoked is what uh, the, uh, uh, the National Commission for SCSC has said. And apart from that, they also pointed out that the family should be given compensation immediately and the family members of Vignesh and uh, the key eyewitnesses in the case should be given protection. That is another recommendation that has been made uh, to the Tamil Nadu DGP. But nevertheless, as far as Vignesh's case is concerned, uh, even though the DMK showed a lot of reluctance in the beginning to act, now that several evidences have come out and uh, there's a lot of pressure, especially from the side of the opposition parties, the uh, Chief Minister, of course, said that the cops will be booked for murder. And we are, of course, waiting to know whether the CBCID will arrest these erring cops today. Okay. All right, Shilpa, thank you so much for joining us with all those details. And from the state of Tamil Nadu, let's shift focus to the state of Tal Telangana. In fact, a day after a Hyderabad resident was murdered by his brother-in-law over an interfaith marriage, the National Commission for Scheduled Caste has now taken Suomoto cognizance of the case. In fact, the National Human Rights Commission has also set a notice to the government of Telangana over the incident. The incident, in fact, took place on Wednesday when the victim was thrashed with rods and stabbed with a knife, leading to his death, following which two people have been arrested in the case. In fact, a day after the honor killing, Times Network spoke to the wife of the deceased and the woman blamed her brother for killing her husband and also pointed out how none of the bystanders came forward to help her. मैं और मेरे जाजू मेरे भाभी जी के घर से अपने घर जा रहे थे और मेरे घर जा रहे तो जब रोड क्रॉस करते ना सर जब ही अटैक कर दिया मेरे भाई लोग और मेरे राज को बैक पे से हम दोनों को भी ऐसा ढकल लेके ओनली मेरे राजू को ही मार दे और मैं जब उन लोगों को धक्का देके मेरे राजू को चले जाने के लिए भी बोली एक चॉइस था उन्हें जाने के लिए लेकिन उन्होंने बोले कि आपको कुछ भी कर सकते बोल के उन्होंने नहीं गए लेकिन वो लोग मुझे कुछ भी नहीं कर रहे ओनली मेरे हस्बैंड को मारते गए और जब मैं उनको बचाने के लिए उनके ऊपर मतलब हटाने गई तो वो लोग मेरे को ढकलते गए सर ढकल के मेरे भाई को मेरे हस्बैंड को ओनली सर पे ही मारते गए सर और लास्ट में वो लोग 10 15 मिनट्स मारने के बाद और जिंदा रह सकते क्या है कि बल्कि पूरा सर फूट जाने के बाद भी अभी फिर से मारने आए सर को पूरा उनसे रिक्वेस्ट भी करते हुए देखे गए थे आप कोई मदद के लिए आगे नहीं बढ़ा क्या उतने लोगों में नहीं सर कोई भी नहीं कर कोई भी मदद के लिए नहीं करे और वो लोग क्या करे मालूम जब मेरे हस्बैंड का इंतकाल हो गया उनका मतलब सांस रुक गई जब टोटली उनका सर फूट गया जब 100 मेंबर्स जमा हो गए सर मैं ये बोलती हूं कि जब उन्हें मर गए ना मतलब उनका इंतकाल हो गया ना जब मैं मैं खुद पुलिस वालों को फोन करके मैं लेके जाती थी जब क्यों जमा हो गए वो लोग वही उतने लोग अगर मेरे हस्बैंड पे जैसा अटैक कर दें 100 मेंबर्स क्या फोर मेंबर्स को मतलब मार नहीं सकते थे सर दैट्स नाउ शिफ्ट फोकस टू वाराणसी एंड वी आर ब्रिंगिंग यू द लेटेस्ट इन द सर्वे ऑफ द मॉस्क in the city's Gyanvyapi. The survey team, in fact, was refused permission to enter the mosque today. The survey will now resume at 3 p.m. on May 7th, that's tomorrow. Tension, in fact, prevailed in the area as the survey team arrived for the survey today. In fact, there was heavy police deployment to keep the situation under control. Now, remember, on April 26th, during the Shringa Gauri worship case, the Court of Civil Judge of Varanasi had ordered videography by the Advocate Commissioner of the Shringa Gauri Temple in the Kashi Vishwanath Gyanvyapi Mosque Complex and other places. My colleague Harish, in fact, uh, now joins me live on the broadcast for all that on suit. Uh, he is, in fact, going to be taking us through all the developments. Yes, Harish, just take us through what really happened here because the survey team was denied an entry permission today in the mosque.
Yes, uh, that's right. A day of high drama at the uh, Kashi Vishwanath uh, Gyanwapi Mosque Temple Complex, at the end of which uh, the uh, <coughs> Anjuman Indizamia Masjid uh, Committee, that is the Masjid Committee, has uh, uh, managed, uh, succeeded in implementing their threat. Remember, the Masjid Committee had, uh, even two days back, uh, said that its secretary, SM Yaseen, had said that they will not allow the uh, Advocate Commissioner Ajay Kumar Mishra to inspect uh, the disputed area and they can al be allowed only to uh, survey and videograph the outer walls of the mosque and not the inside the mosque. A non-Muslim cannot enter, especially they cannot be given any permission to videograph. So that uh, they have managed to implement at the end of the day. Uh, some, some part of the survey has been over. Uh, the survey has been done on the western wall of the uh, mosque on which the, uh, the idols of uh, Hindu deities, Mas Ringar Gauri, Ganesh, uh, Lord Ganesh, Lord uh, Hanuman and Nandi were found mm -hmm. engraved uh, by the Advocate Commissioner, but the, uh, but, uh, the, the Masjid side uh, Anjuman committee did not allow the uh, Advocate Commissioner to enter the mosque. So as of now, and, and towards the end, even the district magistrate of Varanasi had to be rushed in, and the district magistrate has told the Advocate Commissioner that let us, uh, given the tension between the Hindu and Muslim side, let us defer the uh, su survey for tomorrow. It will resume at 3 o'clock, and has very specifically said that if the, uh, I am leaving the decision or regarding entering the mosque, to the Advocate Commissioner, if he wishes so, it can be done and uh, Advocate, uh, advocate uh, uh, Security will be provided to the Advocate Commissioner. So, uh, after today's uh, survey, all eyes on the tomorrow's survey, which will resume at 3 o'clock. Right, Harish. Thank you so much for taking us through all the developments that have happened. In fact, let's also take a look at this reaction from the lawyer that's representing the mosque on why the survey team was really denied permission of an entry inside the mosque. Let's take a look at that. Let's now take a look at uh, the other controversy that has been brewing in the country for quite some time now, it is to do with the loudspeaker row, as we call it. So while setting aside a plea seeking permission to play loudspeaker during Azan, Allahabad High Court today, in fact, said that the use of loudspeaker from a mosque is not a fundamental right. And this observation comes amid the raging debate over the use of loudspeakers across the country, where in fact Azan and Hanuman Shalisa are being pitted against one another and all of this blaring through loudspeakers. Shifting focus now, as India faces a power shortage, the center has invoked Section 11 of the Electricity Act which mandates all imported coal-based projects to generate power at full capacity. The power minister has also directed states to import coal to meet with the increase in demand in power. While Punjab, Gujarat are in advanced stage of finalizing tenders, Tamil Nadu and Maharashtra have issued orders of importing coal. Remember, Section 11 of the Electricity Act gives government the power to ask a generating company to operate and maintain any station in accordance with its directions. States have been told to import coal for blending purposes. In fact, uh, according to Ministry of Power, all states and all GenCos based on domestic coal directed to import at least 10% of their coal for blending. They have been told to rely on imported coal at least for the time being till the crisis at hand continues like this. Apart from this, all the thermal plants in the country, there are at least 13 of them, 
uh, which operate only via imported coal. They've been asked to operate at full capacity. A committee will be formed which will be looking at the pricing here. Centre has also in fact invoked Article 11 of the Electricity Act. So clearly we can say as uh, desperate times call for desperate measures. So it is an unprecedented situation that we are witnessing this year. Now let's get you an update on how are things looking like in the various states of the country. If we look at Rajasthan, the state government has said that power cuts are likely as the demand has increased by 35% since the month of March and coal supply is limited in the state. Meanwhile, looking at Delhi, there have been no power cuts of late and sources in the Delhi power distribution companies also tell us that there will be no power shortage in the national capital as all dues have been paid. Also in Maharashtra, even though the demand has increased, there have not been any power outages in the state as well. Maharashtra Minister Nitin Rawat, in fact, has said that there is no load shedding in the state as well. Maharashtra load shedding is hai. Load shedding is in Maharashtra. Tell me, what is the load shedding in the last two days? The is not in Maharashtra. The government has not been able to do a private company. Ne, अपना प्लांट पूरी तरीके से बंद कर दिया था और इस वजह से यहां पर लोड शेडिंग मजबूरन हमको करनी पड़ी थी and after who report claimed more than 47 lakh people have died due to covid-19 in india between january 2020 to december 2021 sources now suggest that the matter was taken up in the 14th central council of health and Family Welfare Conference that was chaired by Union Health Minister Dr. Mansuk Mandavia. The Health Minister called WHO's model flawed and also underlined that India records its death in a systematic manner. My colleague uh, Harsha now joins me live on the broadcast for more on this. Uh, Harsha, if you can take us through what really happened in that conference, because once again, the health minister is pretty much reiterating the stand that the government has maintained after this particular report by WHO that has come out. Exactly. Uh, first of all, I would, I would like to give you the preview of what exactly happened. When the registration of the birth, the, the deaths in COVID pandemic was released by government, by uh, released by government agency, which was around 4. Point, uh, something 75 lakhs in 2020. The next day, another uh, next day, WHO released data which clearly states that the deaths in India uh, because of mortality during COVID period was 47 lakhs, which is 10 times more than the official count, which health ministry has said. And after that, the this data does. Uh, this data not only involved political and the opposition only didn't take up this WHO data as an agenda, as an as a motive. But also today, when the uh, when the uh, Council for Health and Family Welfare Ministry was held in Kevadia, Gujarat, the Council of 20 ministers, uh, the health minister from all these states, uh, passed a resol uh, resolution saying that this uh, model, uh, the modeling of WHO data, is complete. Dot. It is distress. It is based on assumptions because it can't be coincidence that now when the uh, official data was released, then next day onwards, WHO says that the India is trying to hide the official count during the pandemic. The country says, the health ministry says, the experts say, even the um, organizations that are related to health ministry, they also say that the data which the country has given is exact. No test because of oxygen has happened. And in India during pandemic, there was not much death, not much deaths. But, but WHO says in year 2020, more than 8 lakh people died directly or indirectly because of COVID. And in 2020, 2021, in the second wave, it was the rate was much higher. But if we compare the data in our country, in our country, the data is, uh, which is being quoted is entirely less. But not only India, the Global data. WHO says that 1.5 crore people have died in COVID, and the globally this data is being said is 54 lakh. But health ministry very mm -hmm. precisely said that mm -hmm. this is wrong, and the Council of Health Ministers right. of 20 states uh, made a resolution against this WHO data. Yes. Right, Harsha, thank you so much for joining us with all those details. And if we look at what does uh, Congress leader Rahul Gandhi have to say about the government stand? In fact, uh, he was quoted saying that science does not lie. In a tweet, Gandhi said, and I quote him here, 47 lakh Indians died due to the COVID pandemic, not 4.8 lakh as claimed by the government, unquote.
And staying with COVID, a National Technical Advisory Group on Immunization has recommended that those who need to travel overseas can take the precaution dose of COVID-19 vaccine as required by the country that they are traveling to before the stipulated nine-month waiting period. However, no recommendation as of now has been made over reducing the gap between the second dose and the precaution jab from the current nine months. The top court has referred the matter to a five-judge bench. A bench comprising Chief Justice N.V. Ramanna, Justices Surya Kant and Hema Kohli said that uh, the constitution... A separation of powers or the extent of powers between the Delhi government and the central government, all the issues or contentious issues, sticky points were decided, except uh, this particular issue pertaining to services, uh, the bureaucrats under whose jurisdiction would they come. That issue was not decided because of which, again, uh, this debate has uh, come out in the open because of which the Supreme Court today, uh, like you rightly mentioned, has again referred this issue on the limited point of who the bureaucrats now will be coming under, whether the central government's authority will determine their course of action or whether they should continue to report to the Delhi government. That issue now has to be adjudicated upon by the same superior bench composition, which is no less than five justices of the Supreme Court uh, who will go ahead and decide on this issue ultimately. Uh, and the hearing, like you rightly mentioned, uh, will commence on uh, the 11th of May onwards. But again, uh, what is uh, critical here is the need of uh, debate vis-a-vis uh, -vis the division of powers consistently that has come uh, to the fore uh, between the Delhi government and the central government, and that it continues uh, to be a political hot potato. Uh, perhaps for the first time we are seeing it so bitterly contested in the Supreme Court. Right, Minakshi, thank you so much for joining us with all those details there. And let's uh, shift focus back to the Congress leader Rahul Gandhi, who in fact is currently in Telangana, and he there took on the ruling TRS government. While accusing Chief Minister KCR of cheating the residents of the state, Rahul Gandhi expressed confidence that Congress will in fact be coming into power in Telangana. Telangana ka jo sapna tha. उससे किसने धोखा किया तेलंगाना से हजारों करोड़ रुपए किसने चोरी किए उस व्यक्ति का नाम क्या है नहीं सुनाई नहीं दिया फिर से बोलिए क्या नाम है उसका जिस व्यक्ति ने तेलंगाना के साथ धोखा किया है जिस व्यक्ति ने तेलंगाना से चोरी की है जिस व्यक्ति ने तेलंगाना के सपने को नष्ट किया है उसके साथ कांग्रेस पार्टी का कोई समझौता नहीं होगा And the retail portion of LIC IPO, the country's biggest ever, was subscribed fully in the first hour of bidding on day three. The retail individual investor category garnered over 7.2 crore bid against the 6.9 crore shares that were set aside for this segment. And with that, let me slip into a very short break, but not without getting you these beautiful visuals as uh, Kedar Nath Dam, so, uh, in fact, has opened doors for devotees today. Uh, dedicated to Lord Shiva, this temple in Uttarakhand, in fact, is located on the Garhwal Himalayan range near the Mandakani River. And thousands of uh, devotees visit this temple every year. This was decorated with 15 quintals of colorful flowers and the temple doors have now been opened today. And this has happened, remember, after two years. Take a look at these visuals while we slip into a very short break. Watching Nation tonight with me, Griha. Now, the fifth round of the National Family Health Survey data indicated that progress is being made in population control as the fertility rate of India fell from 2.2 to 2. But while we talk about this being a positive indicator, let me tell you how men perceive issues related to fertility and contraception. Now, in the latest health survey report, men have shown their aversion towards contraception. 
Yes, you heard that right. Because around 35% men feel that contraception is women's business, while 19.6% men think that women who use contraceptives may become promiscuous. Well, it is 2022, the last I checked. Now, let me add that in the report, only five states are above the replacement level of fertility. These include Bihar, Meghalaya, Uttar Pradesh, Jharkhand and Manipur. The report also states that institutional births have increased to 94% in urban areas and to 87% in rural areas. However, India's obesity rate has become a matter of concern too, as the rate has increased from 21% to 24% among women and 19 to 23% among men. Let's now shift focus. A CPIM leader and former Rajya Sabha MP Brinda Karat has filed an affidavit before the top court in her petition challenging the North Delhi civic body's demolition drive in Delhi's Jahangirpuri. The leader in her affidavit said that the demolition drive in Jahangirpuri using bulldozers was only a malified exercise of power and the idea was to target a particular minority community under the guise of removal of encroachment. Meanwhile, the top court has issued notice and also sought a response from all parties, including whether notice was served or not. Remember, Brinda Karat was instrumental in stopping the demolitions at Jahangir Puri on the 20th of April that had continued for an hour despite the top court's order. And Home Minister Amit Shah, who is on a two-day visit to the state of West Bengal, was hosted by BCCI chief Saurav Ganguly at his residence. The former Indian skipper is reported to have prepared a vegetarian spread for his dinner with the Union Home Minister. And after the dinner with Saurav Ganguly, Amit Shah, in fact, will reportedly leave for Delhi. A 40-year-old man has been detained in connection with the sexual assault of two 8-year-old girls in their classroom. The incident had happened in the Bhajanpura area on April 30th. We, in fact, have been relentlessly covering this particular story right here on Mirror Now. The police on Thursday had released the sketch of the basis of the statement of uh, the survivor girls of this man uh, who is a suspect. And the suspect is a resident of the same nearby locality is what has come to light after this report. This is a very important update that we are bringing to you uh, in the MCD school uh, sexual assault case. This is the sketch of the man uh, who in fact is a 40 year old and he's now been detained in connection with the sexual assault case of the two 8 year old girls in the MCD school premises. Remember he had nothing to do with the school. He happened to just loiter in the school, go into the classroom and sexually abuse these two children. The girls, in fact, had reported the matter to not just their teachers, but also the school principal. However, they were asked to actually keep mum. This incident is of the Bhajanpura area. This happened on April 30th. The police, in fact, released this sketch yesterday. And uh, this was released after the statements really were taken by the victims, uh, the girls, the eight-year-old girls. The suspect, in fact, is now said to be a residence of the same locality. And this is the sketch that we are bringing to you on the broadcast, uh, which has been released. And uh, he, in fact, has been detained in connection with this particular case. Let's get you some more stories from all across the world now. I made a massive row over the leak of U.S. Supreme Court's draft opinion on abortion. California officials have vowed to protect the right to an abortion for Californians and people from other states who come there for the procedure. The draft is implemented, uh, uh, if in fact it is implemented, would end nearly 50 years of federal abortion protections in America. You seek an abortion here in the state of California, you will be protected, period. Um, you will have that right. It will be defended here in the state of California. I, as the California Attorney General, will protect and defend and fight for that right. Um, we do not know what other states will seek to do. 
uh, to individuals who uh, seek to exercise their right to reproductive health care and an abortion in other states uh, that provide that right, including California. So uh, I don't want to speculate on what that might be. Hong Kong, in fact, relaxed some of its COVID-19 social distancing protocols as its fifth wave of the virus has receded. Relaxations included mask wearing during exercise and reopening of swimming pools and also beaches. The government also added that the limit on the number of people who can actually eat out together is now raised from four to eight. And Russia has responded to a report by the United Nations Secretary General by doubling down on its contention that Ukraine is responsible for Russia's war. Russian ambassador accused the West of using the conflict as an excuse, uh, in fact, an excuse to punish Russia and also added that West was flooding weapons into Ukraine. Госпожа председатель, вот уже два месяца мы обсуждаем события на Украине, и два месяца, помимо потока враждебности, лжи, фейков, ненависти и оскорблений, мы слышим один и тот же вопрос. Как могла Россия не спровоцированно, как они говорят, напасть на суверенную, демократическую, неагрессивную, независимую, мирную Украину. Ведь она не представляла никакой угрозы для самой России. Среди тех, кто это говорит или кто так думает, допускаю, есть люди искренние, не понимавшие, что на самом деле происходило все эти годы. А есть люди из стран лукавые, давно мечтавшие превратить Украину в плацдарм для битвы с Россией. И они делали все для этого с момента обретения Украины независимости 30 лет назад. Политически, идеологически, а сегодня продолжают делать это, накачивая Украину вооружением. And SpaceX brought four astronauts home with a midnight slashdown in the Gulf of Mexico. The three U.S. astronauts and one European Space Agency astronaut returned home less than 24 hours after leaving the International Space Station. In fact, Elon Musk's company has now launched 26 people into orbit in less than two years since it started ferrying astronauts to NASA, for NASA, in fact. Automatically, but if uh, if needed, the crew can deploy them manually. They have a hard line button in the capsule. It's beneath their uh, display where they monitor the mission. And of course, after the drogue chutes deploy, we'll see those main parachutes, which help to further decelerate the vehicle and allow it to make a soft landing there in the Gulf of Mexico. Great image of those drogues deploying. All right, looks like we have two healthy drogues there. And then George, this visual on two drogues. Copy, we see the same. Descent rate nominal. 500. And there we can see the deployment of those main parachutes. Getting you some breaking news updates now. Punjab National Bank has increased the interest rates on term deposits in selected buckets up to 60 basis points. And this is with effect from May 7th. So this is the latest that we're bringing to you as the PNB, in fact, uh, is going to 
increase the interest rates on term deposits. This will come into effect from tomorrow onwards. Uh, and this uh, term deposit interest rates have been actually uh, increased uh, in selected buckets. And this has been uh, increased up to 60 basis points. So PNB there increasing the interest rates on term deposits. Uh, this comes into effect from the 7th of May, that is tomorrow. Shifting focus now, a day after Jet Airways conducted its test flight for a relaunch, CEO Sanjeev Kapoor has asked its staff to maintain laser-like focus. In an email addressed to the employees, he further wrote, and I quote him here, Yesterday was a momentous and emotional day for all of us, unquote. Now, Thursday's test flight by Jet Airways uh, to and from the Hyderabad airport was part of the relaunch exercise to get the air-operated certificate. The date is also significant as 5th May is when Jet Airways operated its first commercial flight back in the year 1993. The Airways is now operating under its new promoters, Jalan Kalrock Consortium. And the test flight came nearly three years after it was grounded on the 17th of April in 2019. The Indian aviation sector Jet Airways is likely to fly once again. Yesterday was a very important day for an airline like Jet Airways that was grounded in 2019 because of the poor financial condition. And now, after so many years, finally, Jet Airways aircraft are going to be back in the sky once again. Preparations are going on. In fact, the air operator uh, you know, certificate is what the airline is now waiting to get from the DGCA. Ahead of it, there has to be a proving flight from Jet Airways. So that's the procedure, really. Uh, so that's what the airline uh, you know, management is now waiting for. But yesterday, the flight that took off from Hyderabad for about 90-odd minutes was a special one. It was a test flight of the sorts because yesterday was Jet Airways' 29th uh, birth anniversary. And it was a very, very emotional moment for many people who are still with Jet Airways' uh, you know, who are now waiting for the airline to be back in the sky where it belonged. It was only in 2019 when the financial condition became really bad that, you know, the airline had to be grounded. Uh, it, it, of course, impacted the lives of many uh, pilots, uh, crew members, uh, you know, because it led to massive job losses as well in the aviation sector because Jet Airways was a very, very big airline. And now efforts are being made. So hopefully very soon in the next few months, we can expect Jet Airways uh, aircraft to be back in the sky again. Getting you some more breaking news inputs now and Asaduddin Ovesi has launched a fresh attack against the BJP saying that BJP in fact has announced war against Muslims in the country. He has further added and said that in Uttar Pradesh uh, they in fact shouted and said that uh, they didn't have the power to change the government but what happened in that case the same useless politics was played and bjp government came back to power in fact this is what ovesi has gone ahead and mentioned that if you have elected muslim candidates then the candidates would have fought for you this is a a, a jibe at the other parties for losing out on uttar pradesh and bjp coming back to power despite all that was said about the hate politics that is being played out by the BJP. So this is a fresh attack by Asaduddin Ovesi against the BJP, saying that the party, in fact, is announcing war against the minority community in the country. Shifting focus now uh, and going back to Union Home Minister Amit Shah, who has condemned the death of a Bharatiya Janta Party worker in Kolkata's Chitpur, Kosipur area. In fact, calling it political murder, Amit Shah demanded a CBI investigation into the incident. A BJP worker was found hanging from the ceiling of an abandoned building. And this is the case that had, uh, you know, got out dramatic uh, politicking that happened between the BJP and also the Srinamool Congress. And now, as Amit Shah is in the state of West Bengal, he, in fact, has called out what he's called political murder. Bharatiya Janata Party ke karakata dalat ke saamne gaye hain. 
कि इसका वीडियोग्राफी के साथ पैनल पोस्टमार्टम हो और इसकी जांच सीबीआई को सौंपनी चाहिए भारत सरकार का गृह मंत्रालय भी इस घटना का गंभीरता से संज्ञान लेता है और आज ही गृह मंत्रालय ने वेस्ट बंगाल सरकार से रिपोर्ट तलब की है And before we end the broadcast, here's some good news for you, especially if you love your lux goods and then like to deal in digital currency too. This news is absolutely for you as the luxury industry is taking tentative steps into the digital asset universe. And starting this month, Gucci has decided to accept payments in cryptocurrencies in the US. Gucci, in fact, will be initially accepting 10 cryptocurrencies that includes Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, among others. Well, a move clearly in trying to appeal the younger generation of consumers by Gucci. On that note, we are slipping into a very short break right here on Nation Tonight. That's all the time that I had on the broadcast. My colleague Tamanna comes up next with Beyond the Headlines. Stay tuned for that.